now we will talk about the parboviruses so the most common parvovirus which is causing the infections is the parvovirus b19 you will read about this parvovirus b19 in pathology as well but uh, from micro microbiology point of view we have to know that this parvoviruses are the smallest viruses out of all viruses and they possess single stranded dna okay while all other dna viruses are double stranded this parvovirus contains single stranded dna and also this is the smallest virus so these two points should be kept in mind now we will see how does this parvovirus is causing the infection so for that we have to know the pathogenesis the pathogenesis uh, in the pathogenesis the first point is the entry how does this virus gets entry into the body so uh, as I, I mean like all other viruses the most common route is the respiratory route so here also the route of entry is the respiratory route so through the respiratory route the virus gets entry into the body and infects the precursor of the rbc's now how does that pre those precursors of rbc's are involved that is by binding to the p antigen on the rbc surface so uh, when it binds to the p antigen on the precursors of the rbc's the precursors gets infected and that uh, i mean infection of the precursor of the rbc's causes the destruction of the red cells in the bone marrow itself because we know that the precursors are present in the bone marrow so it is uh, binding to the p antigen of the precursors of the rbc's in the bone marrow itself and causing the destruction of those precursors in the bone marrow itself that is leading to the bone marrow suppression and once there is bone marrow suppression that leads to that lands up into the immunosuppression and the hemolytic anemia that means there will be deficiency of the rbc's plus there is decreased immunity by that okay so we will see what is the clinical feature of that infection caused by the parvovirus b19 so uh, in that uh, sequence we have the first disease which is caused by the parvovirus otherwise known as the fifth disease i mean which is called as the fifth disease that fifth disease is nothing but the slapped cheek so when there is infection occurs with the parvovirus in a child there is appearance as if the uh, the child has been slapped okay the cheeks will be very red or pinkish and uh, uh, mimicking as if the child has been slapped so that's why it is also called as slapped cheek and hence it is also called as the fifth disease the rash there is rash on the face of the children then it also causes pure red cell aplasia you will read this in pathology the pure red cell aplasia caused by the parvovirus b19 this is due to lysis of the rbc precursors then it may also cause hydrops fetalis that means uh, this is a non immunogenic hydrops fetalis we have read about the immunogenic hydrops fetalis in physiology this is non immunogenic because this is not involving any antibody against the d antigen okay it is simply causing the destruction of the rbc's by binding to the p antigens of the precursor rbc cells so that's why it is non immunogenic hydrops fetalis being caused by the parvovirus b19 transplacental transmission is uh, leading to the hydrops fetalis now as we have talked about the fifth disease we have to also know about the sixth disease which is there that sixth disease is uh, otherwise known as the exanthem subitum or the roseola infantum so uh, this sixth disease is caused by the human herpes virus 6 you uh, can remember this this is an important point because this uh, uh, disease with any number is very unique thing in microbiology okay in i mean very few diseases are uh, called like fifth disease or sixth disease so these are the those diseases this is fifth and this is sixth disease as it is caused by the herp human herpes virus 6 and fifth disease is caused by the uh, the parvovirus b19 so please remember this uh, diseases that is fifth disease and the sixth disease 
fifth being caused by the parvovirus p19 six being caused by the human herpes virus 6 and then we have the lab diagnosis also the lab diagnosis we can do by the antibody detection in the blood the antibody detect uh, antibody agents against the vp1 and the vp2 antigens of the parvovirus so when the parvovirus enters the immune system of uh, our body produces the antibodies against the vp1 and the vp2 antigens of that virus and that help in uh, help us in uh, detection of the antibodies or uh, in the blood present in the blood and if if those antibodies against vp1 and vp2 antigens are detected in the blood that uh, indicates the infection with the parvovirus then at last we have the molecular methods as well so in which we can use the pcr and the real time pcr for the diagnosis of the parvovirus b19 infection the main motto of uh, talking about this topic was to include i mean to uh, you know, make you know about this fifth disease okay this is a very important disease and sometimes uh, image based questions are asked in the mcqs uh, a, a picture of a child will be given with a slap cheek with a rashes on the face of the children and they will ask you uh, which virus has caused this then you should know you should know that this is fifth disease and it is caused by the parvovirus b19 otherwise they may also ask you uh, about the non immunogenic hydrosphytalis being caused by which virus so you should know that this is caused by the parvovirus b19 by a which antigen it is by the p antigen then they may also ask you about the sixth disease so you should know that this is caused by the human herpes virus 6 so this is all about the parvovirus